so the problem with development is that how to measure something which has both quantitative as well as qualitative characteristic yes development has a quantitative aspect because growth is actually an inherent part of development without growth there cannot be development but it has a very great qualitative aspect how to measure that or how to quantify that qualitative aspect this was actually a major challenge in the 1960s the first major thing that came up was or the most important thing that came up was the welfare economics concept welfare economics that is growth was actually differentiated from development the concept of development was identified as a major thing you have have you heard about mahbub ul haq mahbub ul haq and amartya sen they are the actually the first two economists in the world they actually got the nobel prize as well for bringing up the idea of how development is different from econo growth economic growth so in the 1960s the welfare economics concept the measurement of development was actually a challenge and the thing that started from 1960 that actually reached 1990 to have a conclusive idea on how to measure development okay 1990 so in this process the main confusion is what are the determinants of development we talked about health we talked about education literacy rate it can actually point to development health nutrition can be a measure of development so many determinants can actually determine development so a conclusive thing that the most important among them depending on that time on that time what was the most important things identifying them identifying the determinants converting them into parameters and measuring the indicators this was very important in that context that is why the thing that started in 1960 actually took almost 30 years to get into a conclusive yes anything okay fine to convert into a conclusive idea on how to measure development this took actually almost 30 years so the determinants the first such attempt or the most important at attempt of that was the human development report and the human development index the first important or the most important still relevant thing human development report how to measure development how do we measure development this has actually came up in the human development report with an index called the human development index hdi the hdi very very important upsc can directly ask questions regarding hdi from main for mains as well as prelims okay i think the most the latest hdi human development index report hdr or human development report will be coming next week on march 14 to 15 third week something it was in news actually okay please watch out for that in current affairs so what is human development index here in human development index the development is measured by combining three broad indicators mahbub ul haq and amartya sen in 1990 as a part of undp's welfare program they actually developed this index and the first report was actually released in 1990 so this was the most important of the first initiative and this was based on combining three broad indicators these include what all health a very important thing we discussed education another important thing then what else standard of living so all these three actually point to quality of life these were the broad indicators or broad dimensions on which human development index was what built on health education standard of living because all three actually contribute to quality of life if i am having a uh, frequent illness or frequent health issues then i will not be able to work i will not be able to study so that is actually standing as a hindrance to my progress economic progress educational progress everything my family pro pro progress societal existence everything is at stake without education that could actually impact my health facilities as well i don't know what to do when a, when a health crisis actually happens or education and skill is very important for my economic progress 
job better income better remuneration and standard of living obviously standard of living whether the income is adequate i have i am receiving 50000 a month is that adequate or is that enough for my for ensuring a better quality of life a three bedroom flat or a drinking water pure drinking water good drinking water good food nutritious food can i afford that these are all measures and these measures have been accommodated into three these to these three broad dimensions that is health education and standard of living okay so hda is actually expressed as a value between 0 and 1 a value between 0 and 1 we talked about gini coefficient between 0 and 1 so human development this actually increases zero means there is zero human development the index is actually pointing to zero one means a very good quality of human development in that nation we'll actually come to that before that we have to discuss regarding what are the parameters or indicators so these are the indicators long and healthy life that is health health element dimension of health knowledge or education education element third one standard of living decent standard of living so these are the three broad dimensions and what are the indicators life expectancy at birth life based on life expectancy index okay so health is measured based on life expectancy at birth what do you mean by life expectancy at birth health is measured based on life expectancy at birth what do you mean by life expectancy at birth any idea anyone life expectancy at birth what is life expectancy at birth so life expectancy at birth is means on the prevailing conditions if the prevailing conditions in that society continue it could be very good con society good conditions or very worse conditions what is the expected age that a person is expected to live so life expectancy at birth means when a child is born what is the expected life span of that child this can vary with women and men that we actually accommodate in gender index but in this an average life span that a person could live at the prevailing health and education or whatever conditions that is happening this is life expectancy at birth so health is actually measured based on life expectancy at birth that is the life expectancy index this is actually measured in hdi then coming to education and knowledge the education index this is based on this is based on expected years of schooling what do you mean by expected years of schooling so expected years of schooling means if a person is if a child is admitted into a school what is the expected years he will be completing that school expected years he will be attending that school dropout rate dropouts dropouts is being happening economic reasons are there for dropouts health reasons are there for dropouts so what is the expected number of years that child could potentially attend school if that is low that means it is a very great problem most of the students students may not be completing their education this is the problem so expected years of schooling how far would that child would attend the school the, this education index is based on one measure is this the another one is mean years of schooling mean years of schooling this means that of all the people aged 25 what is the average number of years they have gone to school okay know the difference between expected years of schooling and mean years of schooling expected years means when a child is admitted to school today what is the expectation of number of years he is going to attend the school in the prevailing conditions mean years of schooling means if you take a population of 25 years or around 25 years what is the average number of years they have attended school hope it is clear any confusion on the differentiation both are different indicators education index is based on these two parameters okay so health education now gni index gross national income index that is actually a measure of what hdi 
That is GNI per capita. Gross national income per capita. In PPP terms, what do you mean by PPP? Is that public-private partnership? Obviously not. What is PPP? You should have definitely learned what is PPP in the context of finances. That is purchasing power parity. Okay. Uh, have you studied external sector? If not, it might not be discussed, but purchasing power parity should have been discussed in the context of national income. Wasn't it discussed? Okay, fine. So gross national income per capita. Gross national income per capita means total income divided by the population. And what is the per at the purchasing power parity rate, at the PPP rates? Purchasing power parity means it is not just taking into account the how the wealth is distributed. It is also taking into account what? What is the purchasing power of the people there? Purchasing power means a basket of goods is considered. So with the amount, with the per capita income, what is the affordability or what is the expected capability of those people to afford such, such a basket of goods? That is purchasing power parity. Gross national income at purchasing power parity. This is also taken into consideration. So life expectancy at birth, how far could a person live in the prevailing conditions when a person is born? This is taken into consideration. Next one, expected years of schooling. How far would a child now admitted to school is expected to complete his school? Or how many years would he complete the school? Third one, mean years of schooling. At the age of 25, what is the average number of years a person has gone to school or attended school? Third one, what is the per capita income of a person with which he can afford a basket of goods with, with which he has the adequate purchasing power. So this was actually a very comprehensive index that actually came up in 1990. On the Depending on the prevailing conditions of that period, human development could be measured broadly based on three, three, three dimensions. Hope that is clear. This is the human development index. Okay. So education index, mean years of schooling, we just discussed. Expected years of schooling, that also we discussed. For children of school entering age, this is for adults age 25 years. Health index, that is life expectancy at birth. How far would a child would live? Then standard of living, gross national income per capita, purchasing power parity. So according to the index, the countries are ranked on a scale of 0 to 1. Okay. High human development countries means there is a scale of 0.8 to 1. For example, Scandinavian countries. Then we have medium human development countries, 0.5 to 0.79. India actually lies here. Medium human development countries. Then we have very low human development countries. 0 0.2, 0 0.49, Congo, Sudan. These are all very low human development countries. So there is a scale of 0 to 1, higher HDI means there is a higher quality of life, standard of life, better education and better health facilities. Medium human development countries is, means these countries are actually making great progress. They are not the best, but they are actually going through the very good stage. Low human development countries means their human development is very, very poor. Take for example, the countries which are actually seeking health assistance from various nations. India is actually giving vaccine diplomacy, is a policy of India, health Interventions are being given. So this is a part of human development index. And these countries are the ones who have very low human development. Hope this, hope this is clear.